There we go. Did we go live? Oh, not yet. It's starting. There we go. Yay! Marie Diamond, the amazing, the Marie Diamond. <laughs> I'm so Hi, happy. Christy. The Christy. <laughs> <laughs> I am so happy to be with you. This is actually the birthday, the birth, birth, birthday of the Desire Factor. Yay, our puppies. And um, I was so thrilled and honored because you provided the foreword for this book, which I'm just so thrilled about because you of all people get energy, right? You help people feng shui, not only their homes, but their entire lives, help them release energy blocks. And, um, I know that my life totally, things totally changed around for me in the last couple of years because you came to my house and you said, huh, your house is a monk house. And, oh, that sounds good. I mean, the council came through and all that, right? But monks don't have investment accounts. They don't have relationships. They don't have kids. They don't have houses. They, they take their little bowl of rice and yes. they, they eat that and they're satisfied. And everything that we did to feng shui the house and shift things around everything pivoted at that point and so you are a master at what you do and i'm so grateful for you oh thank you it was a delight to support you with your work with the council and uh making sure that this amazing book could uh, come to fruition from all this wonderful work you have done inside of yourself yeah well, I, I have to share with everybody, you know, you and I have known each other for many years now, and I've interviewed you several times. I mean, going on maybe eight years back, and we've been in TLC together. You know, obviously, you're the one of the founding members of TLC and um, Transformational Leadership Council. And, um, you know, I had lots of meetings where we would say hi and we'd have a chit chat. But after I started channeling the council, we found ourselves in a really an empty ballroom. We were one of the first people in the room, <laughs> in the room. And it was amazing because we were like, Zoom. I mean, we just sat down and you're like, something's different. I mean, you just immediately knew. That was like what you said to me, like something's changed with you. And I'm like, well, I'm now channeling. You go, the council. <laughs> and it was like, <laughs> you were speaking my words. And we just like connected and, and have just had this incredible bond ever since, which I am so deeply grateful for. So I have so much to be grateful for with the council. And you're one of those relationships that literally was just like, so I'd love for you to just share that experience from your perspective. Yeah, no, it was really interesting because, as you know, uh, the council was not an unknown uh, experience for myself as I started my spiritual journey um, for um, a couple of years in the beginning, I did also, um, you know, receive the messages from the council um, when I was still living in Belgium. And so at a certain moment, it was like, it felt for me, I had to pass this on and to let go of that. And so, um, but when I saw you and I saw the energy of the council, like literally around you, I'm like, ah! <laughs> I was so excited uh, for you, first of all, because I know what it, uh, what the richness it gives for you, but also what the richness it is giving for uh, others. And um, so after four years, me doing this work many years ago, this is like 26 years ago, I then decided to really focus more towards feng shui and the law of attraction and really um, teach more on the environmental level. So that was a, a choice I made at that time. So, but for you, and I, I knew right away, like, oh my God, she will really bring this work like globally. You know, I just could see it. And it was really interesting because literally I, you know, sometimes I would see you like in TLC meetings and we're like, why don't we not connect? I was always like a little bit, you know, we talked, but like not connection, right? Like on the same vibe. And so that morning it was just like, I saw you and I was like, your light was just so amazing. Like, God, I haven't seen that yet with her before, right? Because as you know, I see the energy fields of people. And so I was like, oh, I need to, I need to talk to her now. This is now, right? And I was like, then it was just like that uh, five days um, that we were together in San Diego and your family was there, wonderful to meet them there. It was just like suddenly like, 
oh, where has she been all these years? You know, like, and sometimes you know each other, but then somebody still has to go through a new experience to, to be able to talk the same language. So, yeah. so I, I felt like I was probably from TLC, the only person that really understood completely what you went through and what you were receiving, right? Yeah. At that point, right? So I felt it was so important to confirm you, right? And then you did this wonderful uh, message from the council for me, that was just such a blessing uh, for me too. So I was just like, oh yeah, I am totally here to support her. <laughs> Oh, and, and support you have in so many different ways. I mean, it, you know, it's always important to have someone in your life that can see high visions for you. And I know that that's what both of us do for our clients and also having friends and colleagues that do that for each other, because whenever we have a connection, I mean, you, I just was crying and tearing when you, you know, said those beautiful things. Cause it's like, wow, you know, I feel even more expanded just because the vision that you hold for me and what you see for me, it's like, Ooh, you know, so I just, I'm, I'm so grateful for you for that alone, but just our connection and, and the fun that we have and, and the fact that you provided the endorsement or the, 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 um, forward for the desire factor to support my work in that way. It just, it, our work, the council's work in that way is just really extraordinary. Yeah, and you know, of course, it was just with the greatest pleasure. And I'm so super excited for people to really get this book. Um, and to, I've been I've been reading it. And I've been like, you know, even if you know things already, you know, to a certain extent, right, but then hearing it again from the, their wisdom, and then your wisdom connected with that, just each time like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, I can see it differently. Or Oh yes, aha again, right? Or or even sometimes like, oh, this is like, oh, this is like gold here, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like um, there's like um, so they were like, I also love very much the titles, you know, the titles are also so good. I mean, I always love you know, see titles. And sometimes I'm like, I see a title. I'm like, I'm not going to read that one. You know, sometimes the sections of books, yeah. <laughs> right? And then I'm like, Oh, but um, yeah, that, the titles were are also so good. That's and I love the principles, of course. But it's like there are titles in between, and I'm like, oh, this is so good. And yeah, I just I, I love also the amazing artwork, by the way. You know, and you're sitting on the flow in the back. You know, I, <laughs> I never have seen something like this. I thought it was just glorious really glorious thank you marie i so appreciate that so you were telling me before we started pushing um record about your desire because you know you are you were in the movie the secret and mm -hmm. you know you're you're the marie diamond from the secret and things really transformed a lot of people's lives when when they watch that movie and yeah. share with your desire that led to that because desires always lead us to something Correct. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, um, just way back, you know, I was 15 years old. I had, um, I was living in Belgium in Bruges, so far away from the self-help and motivation world of the USA, right? I didn't even know that existed, to be honest. And so I had a near-death experience and I really died. I literally died. And um, I went to the other side and there um, I was in front of the council. I mean, there was the council was there. I always say to people, beings of light, because they don't know what they are, but it was the council, right? And, um, and I was like, you know, okay, I'm here, right? And so they said, no, you have to go back because you are here to enlighten more than 500 million people. So the desire that they gave me was actually a desire that, you know, was given to me. Right. I, it's like it didn't come from my ego. Right. It was given by the council to me. Right. And um, so that's the first time I really, really saw the council, you know, like in the, the, all their beauty and all their light. Mm -hmm. And so when I came back um, and, you know, was revived, um, I. I really remembered that image. I would never forget that image. It's so 
you know, in me imprinted, right? Yes. And so I was thinking, okay, uh, enlightened 500 million people, what does that mean? Like I had no idea. I thought, like, well, it means making a difference. That's the only thing I, I could think of. Because, you know, I'm from a Catholic background, so they don't speak about enlightenment at that point. So I was like, every day I would wake up and I would just um, affirm that, like I am here to enlighten more than 500 million people. And I would always ask the council, ask, the universe, God, uh, show me how, you know, because you can have a desire, but you don't always how, know how to get to that manifestation of that desire. And definitely at 15, I had no clue. But I thought like, well, I can already uh, work at my uh, school, you know, I can already work at my, uh, you know, community, um, helping the the people that are, you know, not able to to do certain things, you know, uh, I was in the Catholic church. So I started, you know, helping the priest, um, you know, I was doing the, 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 the mass for the children. I was preparing that. Then I was actually setting up a meditation uh, group in my uh, Catholic school where wow. actually even the nuns, the nuns came to meditate with me. That was really interesting. Wow. Um, so, I mean, all the things I could do because I, I already was a long time meditator uh, for my seven years old. And so it was quite interesting. Um, and each time I was like, okay, I don't know how, but apparently, you know, there are beings out there, the council that knows, you know, how. And so then I became a lawyer because I was thinking, well, if I want to reach millions of people, if I become a diplomat, work with the UN, you know, or, international affairs, perhaps I could make a difference. Of course, because I had no idea you could do this as a coach, as a teacher, as a speaker. I had no idea because I did not know that world. So um, I remember at 31, um, I really got a huge download from the council that I had to start um, a center for them. And I started my first spiritual center uh, where people would come and I would do, um, you know, conversations, one-on-one -on -one sessions. I would do classes with all information that was uh, passed on from to me. And some of, of this uh, information, you start with the inner diamond meditation, I'm actually still teaching. So there are some re revenants of that, remnants of that field. But anyhow, at 38, I thought like, you know, reaching 500 million people in Belgium, I mean, I'm still, I'm only reaching 10 million people. Um, I need to go to America. So I went to America and I started, of course, already using feng shui and I put on a vision board. I'm going to be in a movie seen by millions of people that will transform the world. That was on the little yellow post-it note like this, right? I put it on my vision board and um, I would say within six months, I was uh, guiding people like Marcy Shimov, Bob Proctor, um, Jack Canfield, John Gray, they became my clients. I mean, you have to understand, I'm an unknown person from Belgium and nobody had any idea about me, right? And, and still I was suddenly uh, connect with all these people. And then they, um, Jack invited me to be founding member of the Transformation uh, Leadership Council. And that is actually a few weeks before we actually filmed The Secret, I had a very intense dream and I knew it came from the council. And, um, and they showed me this woman with half blonde, half long hair saying, um, I'm from Australia, pay attention when you meet me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, I was Shells. sitting down. Yeah, I was very interesting. And I was sitting down way in the back of the room or third meeting. And I was quite shy still at that time because all these people in that room were multimillionaires already, you know, sold books, you know, worldwide. I had nothing, right? I was just an advisor, a mentor to some of them. And there were at that time already about 15 of the people that were there that I was mentoring. Uh, I'm not calling it coaching. I was really mentoring them and supporting them in, in whatever way. So on a spiritual level. And so there was one space left in the room and that was next to me. And so Rhonda Byrne came to sit next to me and she's the producer of The Secret and the creator of the movie and the book. And so she said, hi, I'm Rhonda Byrne. I'm from Australia. And I'm like turning to her, I'm like, ah, oh, I pay attention, you know? <laughs> <laughs> right? And it was like, and she was like, 
what, what, what? And I said, no, no, tell me everything, tell me everything. And she was like, wow, you're so enthusiastic because she had asked others to be interviewed and some of them refused. And I said, no, no, I'm in, I'm in. And this was actually my first TV interview ever. I've never been in front of a camera. Wow. Oh my gosh. Right. And so she's like, okay, it's 15 minutes. I ask you three questions. Two hours later, she's like, wow, the things you're sharing, nobody ever has talked about the law of attraction, like what you're talking about. And she said, you will, you'll be in the movie. And I said, yeah, of course I'll be in the movie. I mean, it's, it's like, right, it's, it's, it's my desire to, you know, because some of these people were saying, well, it's going to be aired in Australia. And I thought like, I don't care where these millions of people are. If they're in Australia, that's good by me. Right. So it was just like, I didn't have to lose anything. I just had anything to win, right? And my desire was so big to enlighten millions of people. And so then when The Secret came out, in the beginning, it was not really going so well. So then I called Rhonda and said, okay, I need to help you. I need to mentor you. So I started mentoring her, set up the feng shui, uh, start helping her out because said, you know, what is your desire? And it was really interesting. We were sitting on, on the beach in Malibu and she said, my desire is to bring joy to billions and said, okay, that's your desire. And it's interesting. You, you have the desire fact that was her desire. And, um, and I said, but how do you want to bring this forward? She said, well, my desire would be that people would get a DVD. There was not a book yet at that time. And they would get the, the DVD and they love it so much that they would buy 10 more DVDs and and give it to their friends and family. Can I pause you for? Can I pause you? Can I pause you for a second? That's how I got it because I had a coach that I was working with. She would always send me books and things like that, and she's like, "You have to get. I'm sending you this book, you movie. You have to watch it." And I got my own copy in the mail that she sent me. Put it in my computer, and then that's when I saw the secret. Go ahead. Well, it's amazing because that's what was her desire, right? And so I said, well, you have to start with yourself. How many, how many DVDs do you have? And she said, well, Maria have about 3,000 DVDs with her last money because she put all her money on it, right? And I said, okay, send to every teacher, there were 24 teachers, 100 DVDs and ask them to distribute that to their database to give. They cannot sell it, they have to give it. And we have 600 copies. So let's go on the streets of LA because she was living in LA. So we went to different areas of Beverly Hills, Santa Monica, Pacific Palisades, all these areas there. And we just would go on the street and we just would tuning into people like, yeah, they need to see good. And we would give it to them. So wow. here, watch it. Here, watch it. And when you like it, you know, you can buy some more for your friends, pass it on, pass it on. And within like a month later, suddenly their pay-per-views start working and people start buying the DVD, buying the DVD. And this is, you know, I said, if your desire is so great, you have to go to the ultimate level. Yeah. And I said, if that means having such a desire that millions of people would reach this, you know, will be reached by this secret, then you have to give everything away. I said, are you wanting to go that far for that desire? And that's exactly what she did. And with the results that it reached at this point, more than 500 million people. (laughs) Check. (laughs) Desire factor, check. Oh my gosh, Marie. I, you know, I've never sat with you and talked to you about like all of that before. What an amazing, just so synchronistic, beautiful story. I, just I know it. It, it's really uh, it's really an interesting thing because each time I ask people, you know, how do you got to the movie? Well, somebody was giving it to me and then I bought more. Right. And 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 I said that was a desire. So when we we put in, we literally took this DVD, we would bless it. And uh, because I'm a big believer in blessings, I would bless it and I bless the desire factor that people would do the same thing, that they would get this and they would immediately say, you know, I know five friends that know this. So anyone that is listening right now, it's not just a book for you, get more books, yeah? 
and give it and pass it on because people need to know how important the desire is, that spiritual desire. It's a soul desire, right? It's not your ego desire, it's your soul desire. And my soul desire was to enlighten you know, millions of people. I'm still doing this. It, it, it never stops. Once you have that soul desire, it never stops. You, you continue. It's, it's so engaging every aspect of your life right? Yes, um, yeah. you, you cannot stop it. So, um, and that is what Rhonda has done. That's what you have done. That, that's what I do is like our desire um, is um, making sure that um, everything what we do is blessed by that desire and is guided by that desire. Mm. Oh my God. Amazing. Amazing. It's so true. And by the way, I didn't put this in the notes, but for those of you that read this, you're going to love it. I mean, I, it, it's just it, the energy in this book. I know Marie, you feel it. It's like, it's, it's infused with the council's energy. So just even having it around and just picking it up and reading it is just amazing. Like just even a, like a sentence, but um, we have a package that is, if you buy 10 books, you get 12 months of healing sessions with the council in a group. Oh. Well, that's no brainer then. Get 10 books, right? Right. It's $197. You buy 10 books plus shipping, right? But you get, it's $197. This, pr this program, if you got a session with the council in a group setting every single month would be a $3,000 value at least. So yeah. get yourself a copy, give it to your friends because now you can have a high level conversation with your friends about desires. And once you start... I mean, the cool thing about having a friend like Marie is that we go deep. We're like, what do you desire? I remember the, one of the first things that you asked me was, well, what is your, what's your desires? Like, what do you, what do you want? What do you envision? And having those kind of conversations with someone is so life-giving. It's, it's like the soul gets involved. The energy of your divine gets involved. Mm -hmm. It's the levels of of depth and connection and fulfillment in connection with your conversations with friends is, is like elevated. It is. And, you know, we had recently a conversation about something about, um, you know, your future. And I said, well, you know, if, what is your desire? And if your desire is this, is what you are working on, is this enough? Is this big enough? Yeah you know, we we're talking about space, is this big enough for that desire, right, to manifest, right? So for me, uh, I knew my desire was so big, and I knew that living in Belgium would never have made that desire manifest because it was just too small. Now, I'm not saying right now would perhaps be different because we have the internet and we have platforms where we can reach millions of people. But to be honest, you know, uh, when uh, 19 years ago, when I left Belgium, there were not such a possibilities, right? So, um, so we have always to look at, you know, we desire something, but what we do, what we who we surround ourselves with, where we live, um, is that aligning itself with that desire? Yeah? yeah. And if that is not, then you need to make some uh, adjustments, right? Because otherwise it doesn't work. It's like, and you, you, you have to also share your family, literally, um, you know, what your desire is. Yeah. So, um, you know, my, my children, they're, you know, 17 and, and, um, and 28. Um, and so that was always my conversation with them. It's like, what is your desire? Like, and like, yeah, my desire is to be, you know, my son said, uh, you know, um, international hip hop artist. Okay, then we'll do everything to get that desire manifest. My daughter's like, hey, I want to be a, a very famous actress in movies and theater and all this. Okay, well, then do everything towards that desire to manifest. So I'm all on board. And sometimes we don't do, have this conversation, but we should have friends. We should have family members that are saying, I'm on board with you, right? Um, I'm there for you. Like I have a husband for 30 years. When I told him what my, my vision was, he was like, okay, I'm on board. And I actually ask him every six months, 
hey, this is still my desire. This is what I see manifesting in the next six months. Or are you on board? I even take him always out for a fancy dinner to, to have this conversation in the best restaurants, right? Um, and to just like, okay, sweetheart, you know. Um, it's like, this is the desire, you know, this is how I see. And he's like, okay, I said, are you still signing up for that? He said, I have to, because otherwise you divorce me, right? <laughs> Is it not really, but you know, <laughs> well, we, I took your advice and, uh, Frederick and I went out for dinner on Sunday because obviously the birthing of the book, and we just had a really beautiful in-depth conversation about our desires together as a couple. And, you know, with, with the new trajectory of Christy and the council and, and everything that the, the company has pivoted in. And, and, uh, so it was, it was really beautiful and connected and, yeah. and. Yeah, it's, it's so beautiful that you have a partner like my partner that and that you have children that are, you know, are along with the journey and, and definitely to have friends and people around you, you know, that and have a coach or uh, somebody supporting you. And I know you have put that all in place for your uh, listeners and, and, and fans and uh, readers of the desire factor, because, you know, um, if you don't have that uh, surrounding, if you don't have the people around you, you need somebody for that. You need yeah. somebody giving you the hand or, or say like, okay, these are the steps you can do because it, it's not always easy to keep that desire so clear, so pure, so, um, so strong, right? Yeah. But I know you have all set this up, right? So that's amazing. Absolutely. So really quick, uh, you have a beautiful picture. Obviously it's a Zoom picture, but yeah. you actually live with the picture. Most people have these Zoom backgrounds, right? And they're like, oh, someday. You actually live in where your picture is on the other side of that island. And yes, I, I, live, I live there, yeah. <laughs> So well, it's really, it's part of my desire factor, uh, to be honest. I was um, um, my first billionaire client actually, um, took me on his big yacht um, to thank me for his work, uh, the work I did for him. And um, I'm, my son was like five, so I was like uh, 35 years old at that time. And, um, and he brought me to the Mediterranean and he uh, parked his boat, actually where you see these boats here, right? So he parked his yacht here, right? And he, you know, we went on land and to all the different places from Monaco to Cannes. And so I came to this island, to this, this not an island, it's a peninsula. And I was walking around here and on the market and I'm like, oh, I'm going to live here one day. You know, it was like this desire in me was like, I said to my husband, this is going to be a place I'm going to live here one day. And he's like, oh, oh yeah. And he was so open to that and like, yeah, I, will, I could desire that too, you know? <laughs> and so, um, so yeah, I, I lived in different places in the south of France, um, but um, it's only the last uh, two years because this is an, an island where, let's put it this way, the billionaires of the world have their space here, right? So um, it's it's one of the, the, the highest end values of the south of France uh, next to Monaco. And um, so I was just described exactly what kind of villa I wanted, with the kind of view I have, where I wanted to have it. I wrote it all very clearly down a few years ago. And um, and yeah, I manifested it to be here on this peninsula. Um, and every day I walk to the marketplace, the local market, see the sea, you know. Um, it's just, yeah, it's it was a desire factor. It took me yeah 20 years to manifest it but you know sometimes that's how it works because I had first to go to America right to uh, become Mary Diamond in the secret and to meet you and many other amazing people before I could really um, had also the wealth to uh, be able to live here right so from Belgium if I would have stayed a lawyer in Belgium I don't think I would have ended up here Oh, I love it. I love how you just flow and follow the energy. I mean, you're such a beautiful teacher in that way. 
you know, to, to help people really understand how important energy is, you know, that's why I think you probably were like, yes, I'll endorse your book and, and do the yes. forward for it. Cause it's all about the energy. It's all about flowing with the desire and who you become yeah. the journey that you get to take when you have desire. Oh yeah. It is an amazing journey. I mean, um, I would never have thought, you know, when I had the desire to enlighten more than five and a million people, I would never have been able to even imagine, you know, the journey, right? It's impossible, right? right? The how is just more incredible than the desire sometimes. You know, the mm -hmm. desire is like something small, but it's like a seed, right? And you put the seed in and you give it water, and you give it nutrition and you, you love it and you talk to it and you like, you grow it, you grow it. But, you know, what then that desire starts attracting the people, the experiences, the situation, sometimes the lessons, not everything is flow, right? Sometimes there are some challenges connected with it, right? Because you are, you're pushing yourself, you know, to grow bigger and bigger. And I had many challenges, don't get me wrong, it's not all flow, but the desire kept me going. Because once you have that strong soul desire, even in moments where it was like a setback or where I was like, I don't, I don't know, right? What was going on? That desire always kept me moving forward. It was the golden line that uh, the universe was showing me, the golden light that was showing me. Yeah. And it was like, there was never a moment, even the most challenging times when, you know, I, I lost one time a company, um, you know, to my accountants, um, you know, doing all wrong things for me. Um, you know, I have been homeless. Um, I had major health issues in my life. Um, I almost got on the kidney dialysis uh, at 23. I would have never been able to do all this, but my desire to do this great work um, for the world has always pulled me through. It was like, it, it pushes you and it pulls you at the same time through this difficult, difficult situations in life. And, um, and yeah, thank God for the desire factor. Well, Marie, thank you for sharing that. Cause I think, <clears throat> excuse me, I think a lot of people go, oh, well, it's so easy for her. You know, it, it no journey is, <clears throat> excuse me, without contrast, no journey is without those, you know, two steps forward to sometimes five steps back, you know, and sometimes a step forward, one step back, but there's, there's contrast that happens in this physical reality that we live. Yeah. And, you know, but look, what you're saying is so true. I call it having spiritual breadcrumbs that you keep following those spiritual breadcrumbs that the show up as a desire, right. And you keep, and you keep following those. And as long as you do, you keep following the light because the light always guides you. Right. Correct. It's, it's yeah, like and I, it's says. so true what you're saying. And sometimes they are irrational, these breadcrumbs, you know, yes. I, really, it's like, I remember, um, you know, when I decided to move to America, I, I just had bought a huge home in, um, because I was doing very well in Belgium, I bought this huge home for a, a big center. Um, and I went already to teach in America, you know, every few months. So one morning I woke up with this voice of the council, you know, like you have to move in three weeks. Yeah. And I was like, okay. So I called my husband and said, start packing. We're moving in three weeks. We just bought a seven bedroom home, by the way. Right. So he was like, okay. Well, I said, we can try it for three months. I said, yeah, okay, we'll do it for three months. So we just, you know, moved everything uh, with the dog um, to America. And um, I really literally had, because everything was in the house, I had no money. I mean, literally I had to start from scratch in another country. I just had bought, you know, a big home. That, that was it. And so I, I rented a, a place for a year because that was the least I could do, you know, but I knew I was only going for three months. So I was like, I don't know how to do all this, but I was just following that, that thing. And then some of my students, they, they were like, okay, we need to get Marie to stay here. Right. And so they actually went to all their garages and they put in that house that was empty. So I came with seven bedrooms and two thousand seven bedrooms, sorry, seven suitcases and two thousand dollars. That's all I had left. And I arrived 
and I opened the door and there was a fully furnished home. Wow. Fully furnished office, uh, towels, food in the fridge. They had gone to everyone and looked at what they had in the garage ready for garage sales. And I had a fully furnished home. Amazing. Right. And I was like, okay, it looks like I'm going to stay longer. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, So that was like, and it was like a jump, you know, but thank God I did that jump because two weeks later I met, I did a seminar. I met Marcy Shimoff and she opened up doors for me to all these other kinds of people. I would have missed a sequence of experiences and contacts that would never have led me to the secret. Yeah. Yeah. So if I would not have jumped at that time. So sometimes it's irrational, like what your intuition will say. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, when I tell that now, my husband's like, we were really crazy at that time. Right. <laughs> I just said, I know. But we were like, OK, three months, we can always come back. Right. That's all, right. the whole thing. But three months stayed six months. And then I had to, you know, get my visa in order and so on. But the whole point was, you know, so many times it was like, oh, I have to go there. OK, I go there. Oh, I have to call this person. Oh, I have to read this or I need to do this. Yeah. And so it's so important. And this book will definitely help you to keep believing in the desire you have. And um, and literally what I have done the last uh, week is just opening it up, uh, you know, like having a question. This is a kind of, not all the books are like this, but this is a kind of book that you can literally ask a question, mm-hmm. yeah, and open it up, yeah. Um, and say like, oh, this is um, what it actually, that's the answer and, and see where your eye falls on. I mean, not all books have that, but this book has it because it's energized by the wisdom of the council. Yeah. yeah. And so um, that's why you're saying there's energy in it. Yeah. It's, and that's why I suggest people, this is a book to have next to you on your nightstand. Yeah. This is not a book for a bookcase. Yeah, this is the book to say like, hey, I am, I'm, I need something of guidance or in the morning or in the evening. OK, I read something. Oh, this is yeah, what I need to read right now. OK, thank you. Right. This is the kind of book. This is the book you always want to have with you when you're traveling, when you're this is what I, you know. So it's actually I have not so many books, but because I always try to minimize books. But this is a book since I have it, it's on my desk. Yeah. So in the morning I open it up, you know, I'm like, oh, this is what I need to read. Okay. That makes sense. Thank you. Right. And always say thank you because this is a living entity. Mm -hmm. This is not just a book. You have to see there's difference between books that just people read and write something, but this is a living energy and a living entity. Right. So that's why you can talk to that book, you can ask a question, open it up, and you always bless it and thank you t- towards that book and towards Christy, of course. <laughs> towards the council, for sure, for the wisdom. The council, and, the and Christy, yeah. Yeah, because you're the one that ultimately took on. Um, I mean, I could imagine 10 years ago, you would have like, what? I'm going to do this, right? But right. you followed your breadcrumbs, right? I did. I did. I just recommend follow the light, the light spiritual breadcrumbs that show themselves to us as a personality called the desire, because it is your desire factor. It's who you become in the process of your desires. Yeah. <sighs> Marie, I adore you, love you. I'm so grateful for you. Thank you for sharing your wisdom, your stories, your energy. You're just, you are literally one in a million, one in a billion. You're just amazing. And I'm so grateful to have you in my life. Thank you so much. And I'm so blessed to have you in my life and, um, and that you represent a council um, for years, many years to come and bring that wisdom and your love for the world out. And so, you know, think about the 10 copies, right? Because that's the one that you need to have because you need to really start thinking about like the secret, um, like you need to pass it on and uh, other people need it and write a list down, like who of my friends need it right now? You know, um, it's a birthday coming up or whatever, even give it if it's not a birthday. So anytime, thank you so much. 
Oh, thank you. Yeah, so for that 10, uh, the 12 uh, sessions with the council, you can go to the desirefactor.com forward slash the number 10 books. I'm sure Beth is going to put that, that in the chat. Thank you for all of you that are in this community. I just so appreciate you. Marie, you're amazing. Thank you so much. Big hug. Bye. Bye, everybody.